Hi and welcome to Tribe Toolbox where you will find tips, tricks and stories by black women for black women. My name is Toby, I've been producing for seven years and I currently work at the Bush Theatre in Shepherd's Bush and for Apples and Snakes. I also run the Black Ticket Project which is an initiative to get young black people into theatres. In this episode we'll be talking about producing and covering things from fundraising and budgeting to pitching your idea. And I've got lots of tips and tricks to share with you around working with artists and producing your own work. A producer is technically someone that oversees a project, usually from its genesis right through to the delivery. I'm a theatre producer, but there are all different types of producers in areas like film, television, live events and festivals. A lot of people will find that they've probably been producing before they knew it. So if you've ever arranged a dinner party for someone, if you've ever arranged a group holiday, all of that is producing essentially. It's all about organisational skills, it's all about uh, leadership, and working with other people. There isn't really a textbook way of getting into producing. I did an apprenticeship at Battersea Arts Centre in community arts, which is working with young people and community groups to make work. Outside of that, I did lots of different courses around festival producing and working uh, outdoors, making live scale work at places like Glastonbury and Bestival. And at the moment, I work for smaller com companies and organisations that don't have their own venues and are learning a lot about uh, collaborating with other partners and other venues to make work that way. These are my three top attributes every producer needs to have. You'll usually be the first point of contact for everything, whether it comes to booking the venue or finding a space, working with the different artists that will all be together in the room, collating all the information that everyone will need. So you need to be the person that needs to be the most organised. You will talk to everyone. You will talk to all the artists, you will talk to all the creative team, you will talk to whoever you're going through booking the space, you will talk to the venues, you will talk to every single person. So you need to make sure that you are a people person. You need to be kind, you need to be considerate. You still need to be firm in terms of people coming to you with odd requests that might not fit uh, your logistics or the budget that you're working with. But you need to be the person that will keep everyone's morale high. You won't always have all the money you want to be able to do things. So you need to be resourceful in terms of who you know and who can do favours for you or do things a bit cheaper and where you can find things easily. A lot of producing is about sourcing things that you need in the most affordable and effective way possible. If you're working in areas like film, television, theatre or festivals and live events, you're most likely going to be working with artists. And this could be music artists, it could be theatre makers, it could be uh, musicians, it could be directors or writers. There'll be a pool of artists that you might be working with. Different artists will have different needs. There'll be some artists that will be quite skilled and resource themselves in regards to producing and might want you to come in at a specific time. And there'll be other artists that literally have no idea about what they're doing and will need you to work from the very beginning. So it's about making sure that you know what kind of producing you're in, interested in and what kind of producer you'd like to be in order to make sure that you find the right artist to work with for that relationship to be as smooth as possible. If you're working with a lead artist on a project, they're probably the person that you're going to talk to the most. So you need to make sure that you like each other and that you get along well and that you're able to interrogate each other's ideas but also maintain a good relationship throughout the project. In this bit, I'm going to be talking about fundraising and budgeting and I'll be talking more specifically about live performance and how to fundraise for that. But a lot of this will be transferable across other sectors as well. Public funding is money that the government holds that is taking people's taxes, that is put into a pot that people apply for or organisations apply for. So here you're mainly looking at things like Arts Council England or National Lottery or any of those kind of public sources of funding that are available online that you just put in an application for and it's reviewed. With private funding, you're mainly looking at things like trusts and foundations. They're slightly different to public funding. Trusts and foundations are usually set up by families uh, and it's generational wealth. So it's people that have left a large sum of money behind that they directly want to go to certain aspects um, of the arts. 
So it could be about um, inspiring young people. It could go directly to startup organisations. Each trust and foundation will usually have a specific area that they like to focus on. So with trust and foundations, you've got to do a bit more research as to where your project fits in with which funder. It's a bit of a longer process. You usually go for a meeting with them first to talk through your idea and to get to know them. After following that, they'll let you know whether to put in an application or not. You'll have to put in quite a huge application depending on what you're applying for. And then the turnaround can be anywhere between eight and 10 weeks until you find out whether you've got the money or not. Each trust and foundation will have a completely different process of how they um, monitor that spending, how they give you the money in the first place. There are some funders that will send you a check for the full amount. There are others that you'll need to report to and monitor your progress in the project to make sure that you're delivering what you said that you would deliver. With other sources of income, you're looking at things like angel investors or philanthropy, so individuals that will directly donate their own money into your project. Uh, you might be looking at patronage, so people that might uh, sign up monthly or yearly to continuously give money to your project and in return they'll receive uh, special invites to things or uh, things that other people might not necessarily receive. So it could be corporate sponsorship or it could be non-monetary sponsorship uh, where they'll put their logo on your flyers and in return they'll give you food or drinks or clothing or whatever it is that you're asking for. Another source of income is ticket sales. Now this is anticipated money that you're hoping to make. Uh, that's usually calculated on around 60% of the maximum amount of tickets that you can put on sale. If you're working on a low budget or no budget at all, there'll be different ways of trying to get stuff for free. A lot of this will be looking at the people that you know, whether it's your friends, your family or your colleagues, and seeing if any of them have the skills or the resources of things that you need, or if they know anyone that does. You might also reach out to people outside of your network. So for example, there was a show that needed a lot of chips, and so we reached out to the local chip supplier and they gave us lots of chips without expecting anything in return. This kind of relationship is about finding a common interest and getting someone to believe in what you're doing. No matter what kind of producing you're going into, you're probably going to need to pitch your idea. These are my three top tips for pitching. When I'm preparing a pitch, I usually start with writing up the big idea, whittling it down into a paragraph or synopsis, and then coming up with an elevator pitch. An elevator pitch is usually one line that summarises your project and picks out its key points. Pause the video now and practice writing your elevator pitch. It's important to be as enthusiastic as possible because it helps other people get excited about your idea and wanting to listen to you more. Don't overcomplicate your pitch by adding in too much information. Make sure to keep it concise and keep it necessary. If you're handing out resources or you've got a PowerPoint, make sure you're not doubling up your information as well. So I've told you a bit about the basics of producing, but if you want to get your foot in the door, here are a few places to start. You can check out producing courses at Battersea Arts Centre, the Almeida, the Roundhouse and Stage One. They're all completely different and offer different things and vary in length, so there'll be something for everyone. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Tribes Toolbox. Make sure you like, subscribe and comment down below with what you've learned and also make sure you check out the other videos as well.